So this is our cave sound as it currently stands. And by the end of the episode, every water drop synced up with the reverberating sound. And... Immersion, 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 immersion. I keep saying it, but that's what we're aiming for. Sound is critical to a high quality RPG because the player needs to feel like they're physically present in that location. And that means the sound needs to reflect that. And it's not so simple as just getting cave sounds for this episode because most sounds, or at least many sounds, are gonna be used in a combination of indoor and outdoor environments. And those same sounds are gonna to sound totally different in a cave compared to an indoor room, compared to like a city environment or a forest. And so with this episode, we're gonna cover all the basics for creating those realistic differences. And I should add that there's a really good free sound course that Unreal Engine provides called Sound in Space. And you can find a link to it in the description below. A lot of the stuff in this episode comes from that. And one last thing, there's a new audio gameplay volume system in Unreal Engine 5 that I included a link in the description below too. And I tried playing with this, but quite frankly, I couldn't get it working. From what I understand, the primary advantages to this new system are modularity, like you can give different spaces, different sound settings, and then also the ability to dynamically update those spaces at runtime. So for example, if a wall explodes and you need an area to sound completely different because the wall is gone. But this system is still in beta, there's not that much documentation on it, and for what we're doing today, I figure it's best to start with just the basics, what I know to be sound, no pun intended, and then we'll go from there. So here are the key concepts for today. And everything revolves around how do we manipulate sound in space. So let's get to it. All right, so a couple of quick prerequisites for this episode. So in your content drawer, in the settings here, just make sure you have show engine content checked here. And if you're not following along with this series, just make sure you have some sound set up that you're playing at a location and that that sound has an attenuation asset. And if sound in Unreal Engine is new to you, I recommend checking out episode 17, Environmental Sound, and it goes over all the basics. All right, so we're gonna start in our cave environment here, and I'm gonna search for an audio volume, no space. In an audio volume, is an actor that defines how sounds behave in that space. And the first thing we need to do is we need to scale it up to be roughly the space of our cave. So on the right hand side here, instead of the scale here, I'm going to come down to our brush settings and I'm going to set this to be 3000 by 3000 by 2000. But just make sure that it's roughly the size of your cave. You're not going to get it exactly there, but that's okay. And the other thing to check, I'm just going to make my camera a lot faster. Make sure it's not drastically sticking up outside of your cave here. So you want to look for those edges and put them just below where your landscape is. And the other thing I'm doing here, which just luckily worked out for me, is the corners of it are roughly in line with our entrances and exits. So this corner and that corner. Initially, you just need a space large enough to test out what we're going to do. All right, so if I come back up in the details panel and I go under settings, which is under reverb. So reverb, if you're unfamiliar with sound, it's the echo effect. It's the mmm that's going off the walls in our cave. And luckily, Unreal Engine already comes with standard reverb effects. So if we go under reverb effects here, we've got an alley, auditorium, bathroom, and I'm just going to select cave. Basically, my plan is the middle of this is going to be cave, and then our entrances and exits, those are going to be cave hall, which is a little bit different structure acoustically. The volume is going to determine the volume level of the reverb effect, and I didn't end up changing this, but feel free to play around with it. The fade time, though, that's really going to be dependent on the size of your cave, and for this cave, what felt realistic for me is about three. A smaller cave, you would set this to a smaller amount of time because the sound's bouncing around at a faster rate. So if you've got all that and you're following along with this series, you can actually play from here and you're going to get a reverb effect. So you hear our footsteps just echoing out into the distance. It's subtle, but if you get something like the fireball, that's gonna have a much louder reverb effect. And the other thing I should mention is that the audio volume is based around where you are, like where the player is, not based on where the sound occurs. Because if I fire something like way up in the air, so let's say up there, so even though the sound is outside the volume, it still applies to the player that's inside the volume. Now, if you're not following this series and you're not getting any reverb effect, let me show you what actually controls that. So if you go into any of your sounds, and I'm gonna go into character here, human, into our footsteps. So back in episode 19 for footstep sounds, we created two different attenuation assets, one for hard surfaces, one for soft surfaces. And I'm gonna go into either one of those. Let's go into hard surface here. So in order to get the reverb working, you have to have an attenuation asset on your sounds. And then here, attenuation reverb, you have to have this enable reverb send checked. 
So that's how you could disable reverb on a particular sound. Like if you already had a cave sound, if you have a cave ambient sound, you don't want additional reverb off that sound, then whatever attenuation you assign to it, just uncheck this checkbox. But now let's start discussing the problems with this. And let me show you our first problem here. So if I play from up here and then I drop into our cave, uh, so now all my reverb's working once I'm in the cave, but dropping into it, it takes about a half a second to actually kick in. So let's see what we can do to fix that. So the way we're going to address this is we're going to add a second audio volume and we're actually going to end up adding a lot more, but we're going to add another audio volume that's directly above our entry, this hole into our cave. And so let's go up and search for audio volume again. So select audio volume. Now we've got an audio volume two. And once again, make sure apply reverb is checked. Our reverb effect is once again going to be cave fade time of three. And this one, instead of a box, let me scroll down a little bit so you could see it, the brush shape here. So we're gonna change this to be a tetrahedron, which is a fancy way of saying sphere, but it has flat surfaces. So it's sphere-like. So we can move that tetrahedron up, 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 close to our entrance. But I wanna scale that up a little bit. So I'm gonna come up and then the radius here, this I'm gonna to set to something like 2024. So it's actually a pretty big sphere and it's overlapping our other box. But what you want to do is go outside and just make sure the sphere is not sticking out. So I'm lowering it, lowering it. You want the tip of it to be roughly in line with that entrance. Yeah, so we're never going to have a listener right there. So it's okay if it's sticking out a tiny little bit like that. Now you might ask the question, okay, which of these reverb settings is it going to use? Because we have this tetrahedron volume and then we also have our rectangle volume that's in there. And what we can do is we can set a priority for each one and the higher the priority, well, that's gonna determine which one's going to be used. So for the tetrahedron, I'm gonna set the priority to one and then we can test again. So I'll zoom out and we will play from here. So I can test running around outside. We get our footsteps, but no reverb effect. If I jump in. Ah! All right, so that's all jumping in, right? But we still have a problem because as I run out, so listen to my footsteps. So we suddenly go from total reverb to nothing. And then back to total reverb. So we need to set up some space at our entrances and exits where we can blend in and out of that bigger cave environment. So let's do that. So starting with our larger exit here, so let's drag in an audio volume. So this is gonna be our third one. And this one, I think I'll keep a box, but up to you. You know, if you think uh, maybe a cylinder would work better, feel free to try it out. And this one I'm gonna to set to be 4,000 by 4,000 by 1,200. And I'll move it into position. And again, you want it to be slightly outside of the cave, just barely. I'm also gonna rotate it slightly. So E, and we're gonna rotate it to be roughly in line with the cave. Maybe push it down slightly. Yeah, right about there. And then we can see, yep, that comes up to just about the corner there. All right, so same kind of thing. So the reverb effect, instead of cave though, it's gonna be cave hall. And that's gonna be a little bit different. And by the way, I don't know how these reverb effects work. I just assume that their Unreal Engine sound engineers have done a lot of testing on these. And if you double click to go into it, it has a lot of settings here. Late delay, decay time, density, diffusion, all stuff that's whew, way over my head. So I just leave it be. And then for priority up here, instead of 1.0, I'm just gonna give it 0.5. So it's gonna have a higher priority than our interior space, but not as high a priority as the tetrahedron. And then a little bit further down the fade time, once again, three seconds, and further down even still under ambient zone here. So we get to some settings that we haven't yet played with. So the exterior volume. So these are sounds that are coming from outside the space. And because they're coming from outside, they're gonna come into the cave, certainly but they're not gonna be at full volume. So I'm gonna lower that down to 0.5. So then to test this out, what I'm gonna do is back in our, I think it was like three, four episodes ago, we created our gameplay ability pickup actors. And I'm just gonna copy both of these and paste them. Just gonna move them right outside of our entryway. So we got our fireball and then for our flamethrower, instead of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch that over to our air ability. And this is all stuff we set up in episodes 39 and 40 of this series. So air, come up here, air ability channel, air intensity 100, and then air, air channel with UP. All right, so then we can play from here and we'll test out both those sounds. So going in, we go from zero sounds to, let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit more, a little bit more. Yeah, I hear it echoing as I'm leaving. 
Then once I'm out, nothing. And feel free to play with these settings because quite frankly, I am not an audio engineer and you might come up with something better, but this worked just fine for me. So now we're gonna take this, we're gonna duplicate it, paste it, and we're gonna move it over to our other exit. In this one, since it's a much smaller space, we can scale it down quite a bit. So I'm gonna make it roughly 2000 by 2000, something like right about there. And you can also rotate it. So instead of just being straight in, what I'm gonna do is switch over to rotation mode. I can rotate it up quite a bit. And actually let's make it more like 3000 so that it extends quite a bit inward. You want it to touch the other volumes. Let's do 4000. And we could test that out. Right click, play from here. So the last thing is we got to fill out all the remaining spaces. We have some weird spaces in our cave and I'm just going to fill those out with tetrahedrons. So I'm just going to duplicate the massive one here, control C copy, control V paste. And once we duplicate it, then set it down to maybe like 500. And then we could just put those all in the spaces that we need to fill it. And just make sure it's not popping out of the landscape. Duplicate those a few times. And if you're uncertain about whether you're going to get reverb in a particular place, you could just say play from here, test it out. So now that we've got reverberating audio volumes all throughout our cave, the next step is should we give it some general cave ambiance? And for this, I thought about just getting a sound from Zapsplat or another free sound and having it play for our overall cave. But then I thought to myself, wait, could we do this more naturally? Like, could we have realistic sounds in our cave and then just have the reverb effect that's already in our cave applied to those sounds? And that water dripping that you heard on the intro, that's exactly what I did. So that's what we're going to set up. So here are the free sounds that we're using for our water dripping. Both of them come from Zapsplat. You can download them at the link below. And then once you download them, if you're using Audacity, which is a free audio program like I am, then you can move those into Audacity and you could just export multiple to WAV files. And then once I got the audio files, I just created a new folder under sound ambiance for cave and I dragged both the sound files in and then I selected both right click and say create single cue right here. And that's this cue here. So let me go into that and show you that. So this random node here, make sure to uncheck randomize without replacement and then both of them can play over and over and over again, but we're modulating it quite a bit. So the pitch can go from 0 0.7 to 1.3. And then the other thing is the overall volume. Let's reduce this to 0 0.1. And last but not least, give this an attenuation setting of Ambience Binaural 5000. And we set this up back in our very first sound episode, episode 17. Let me show you this. So it's just a very simple attenuation asset. So now let's add this to the blueprint that we set up back in episode 58, which was our shallow interactive water body. I'll go into that. And by the way, what I'm showing you here, this will work for any water blueprint that you've got. But in episode 58, we set up Niagara 2D Water, which is the new Niagara Fluids plug-in water. So all we're going to do, if I zoom out on the event graph a little bit, and I come down to spawn water drop particle. So this is the custom event that's firing every time a single particle gets spawned. And if I come down over here a little bit, I'm just going to create a little bit more space here. And from our water surface NS, from our world location of that water surface, we are going to play sound at location. Basically, we're playing the sound at location at the very same location that we're creating the ripple effect over the surface of the water. So I'll move this in here, connect this up here, connect this up right here. And then from the content drawer, I'll just drag in our water drip queue right there. Compile and save this. And let's play from here. So that sounds great, right? Because we've got the reverb effect, but the only problem is if I play from here on the outside. So how do we set sounds that are playing inside our cave from being heard outside of our cave? And for that, we're gonna create a brand new attenuation asset. We're gonna start with this water drop particle. So I'll go back into my sound queue here in this ambience binaural 5000. I'm just gonna go over to that folder. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna duplicate. I'm gonna name this ambience binaural 5000, but at the end of it, I'm gonna put with occlusion. And I'm gonna move this over from our jungle environment into our cave folder, move here. So what's occlusion? So occlusion is blocking the sound. And what we need to do on this attenuation asset is enable occlusion. And the way it determines whether or not the sound is blocked is it does traces, basically does line traces outward. And if it hits something based on a certain channel, visibility, pawn, et cetera, 
then it's occluded. And to be honest, this is really basic. This isn't that sophisticated because if you're hiding behind a rock, but that rock is still within the cave, it's going to be an occluded sound. You're not going to hear the sound. So it doesn't work all that well. There are add-ons. I think they cost money, but if anyone knows any free assets that work great for this, please post in the comments below. But this is still going to work sufficient for what we want to do. So basically this first setting, occlusion low pass filter frequency, it's saying, okay, what is the frequency of sounds by which anything below that, you still want to allow that sound to pass through. So think of a deep sound like rumbling underneath the surface of the cave. So we do want to have that above zero, but it's going to be a very deep, very low number. So I'm going to set that to 50, 50 hertz. I think that's in hertz, yeah. The low pass filter frequency in hertz to apply if the sound playing in this audio component is occluded. And then the occlusion volume attenuation. So we're gonna filter out everything above 50 hertz, but we still want it to be much quieter than it otherwise would be. So I'm gonna set it to be roughly one tenth the volume of what it is currently. Now this occlusion interpolation time for this, 0.1 will work just fine. But we're gonna talk about this in just a moment in relation to the fireball. So let's go back over to our water drip queue. Let's assign the new one. So ambience binaural 5000 with occlusion save that and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller I'll put it off to the side here because we can actually test this at runtime so I can say right click and play from here be directly above the water drop do you hear anything I don't hear a thing so let's go over to ambience binaural 5000 and let's adjust that so let's adjust this back to normal I hear it very quietly back to one there's our water drop set this back to 50 I barely hear it, but it's that th, th. It's just a thud now because we set this to 50. But again, I'm gonna set the volume down to 0.1. So now, nothing. And so depending on the type of sound, like our fireball explosion, that's still gonna be somewhat loud underneath the surface of the ground. I'm gonna set that to be occlusion low pass filter frequency at like 100, and I think I'm gonna set that to be 0.2 here. But everything else, I think we can keep at 10% volume and 50 hertz. But if you're an audio engineer and you know this stuff way better than I do, please post your ideas in the comments below. And I should also add, we'd love to have you on the Discord. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go into every single one of our attenuation settings and set this, this occluded attenuation. So we'll save this one, we can close out of that. Go back to the content drawer, back to sound. And we're all set with ambiance. Let's go into character, into human, into footsteps. And we gotta do this for these two attenuation settings. Enable occlusion, visibility channels, totally fine, 50, 0 0.1. Save that, on to the next. Once these two are done, then back over to human, over to vocalizations, heartbeats, we don't need to occlude in any regard. Well, because they're inside us. So damage taken. So we have these three, voice heavy, light, and medium. We're gonna do the same kind of thing. Enable occlusion, and then set this to 50, 0 0.1. Yeah. All set with our voice attenuation. So cut out all of those, and then go back over to human. Actually, we're done with human, so back over to sound, and then our gameplay abilities. Go into our air, Spatialized air ability attenuation, same kind of thing. Enable occlusion, 50, 0 0.1. Back over to gameplay abilities, fire. Gameplay ability explosion attenuation. So this one, explosions, they're going to be a little bit louder. So 100 and then 0 0.2 here. We're also going to adjust this right here, but hold off on that for now. You can keep this open, but go back to content drawer, gameplay ability, fire attenuation. I think this is the last one, maybe. 50, 0 0.1. Save. But we still have another issue with the water drop occlusion because let me show you this. So if I go just over the ridge here, oh, I don't hear it anymore because I'm over the ridge. It's occluded. But then if I poke my head above, then I hear it. Not realistic. So that's what I was talking about, that there are programs out there more sophisticated that can determine how occluded is something and how should the sound change based on that occlusion but we're not gonna to get to that level of complexity this episode. So what we're gonna do is a very, very simple fix. So into our shallow water body, I'm just gonna add an exposed option within this blueprint where we can say, okay, the sound is gonna come from some distance above the water. In that way, if there's a simple ridge like that, if the sound's in air, it's gonna travel further. So from this get world location here, I'm just gonna do a plus sign, and then I can right click on this and I can split the struct pin, connect this up here just like this, and I'm gonna promote the Z to a variable, promote to variable. And for the name, I'm just gonna rename and I'm gonna call it the sound distance above water. And for that variable in the description here, I'm just gonna say in centimeters. And I'll also make it instance editable, exposed on spawn, compile and save this. And then back into our world, we can say sound distance above water. Let's set that to 500 centimeters. And then we can play on a ridge. We're hearing it behind our ridge, still hearing it. So far so good. 
All right, so now let's go over another issue. So I'm going to come out here to where our air ability and fireball are. Play from here. So I cast our fireball into the cave. And that sound gets turned off just like a light switch. Not realistic. So what's causing that? So we got to go back into our gameplay ability explosion attenuation. And that's this occlusion interpolation time. So let's do this at runtime again so you could see this. All right, so fireball cuts off immediately. If I adjust this occlusion interpolation time, let's adjust it to one, then the fireball, then I still hear it for that second. So that's what occlusion interpolation time controls. So for the last part of this episode, I would like to set up the shallow interactive water blueprint that we've got here just to be able to alter the rate of water drop. So basically be able to vary it up as needed as we like. So I'm going to come up here to event begin play and we're going to create a new variable. So plus sign, I'm going to call this steady rate question mark in this Boolean. I'm going to make an instance editable exposed on spawn. And then I'm going to take this steady rate and I'm going to hook it directly up to whether or not we want to loop right here compile and save this. Now we're going to create a second new variable. This one's going to be titled variability. And this one is going to be a float. And I'll also set that to be instance editable exposed on spawn. And I'll give this a description. It's going to be a positive number less than the rate of water drop. And for our rate of water drop here, I'm also going to add a description to that. So that's going to be number of water drops per minute on average if randomized. So now on the spawn water drop particle itself, I'm going to come down all the way to the end of this and we're going to check to see, OK, is that steady rate true? Because if that steady rate variable is true, it's already looping. But if it's not true, then we have to determine when we're going to call this event again. So I'm going to do a branch here. I'll hook this up here just like that. And actually, this is going to be if not true. So I'll search for not going to come up to up here, not Boolean, connect this up here. So if it's not steady rate, then what we're going to do is set timer by event. And the event is going to be, I can drag all the way back here. And I'll put in a couple of reroutes here. So one up there, move over to the right, and then one right up here. And also I'm going to zoom out, move this over because we need a little bit more space here. So we got to figure out how much time is going to elapse before we do set timer by event again. And for that, I'm going to start with a clamp because we want to make sure that the clamp is set to something above zero. So let's do a minimum of 0.01 and a maximum of, let's say, 60 seconds. And the value is going to be something added. So we're going to add our rate of water drop. So drag in our rate of water drop and then divide that by 60. And where I'm getting this from is exactly what we have over here. And that's going to determine how many times a minute we want this to happen. So divided by 60, connect this up to the top one here. Gonna move this over, move this up. And then what we're adding to is going to be a random float within a range. And this is going to be based on the variability that's set right here. So we're going to bring in our variability float. And then what I'm going to do is divide it by 60. And that's going to synchronize it up to this rate of water drop. Move it out just a little bit because up here, the minimum, we're going to multiply that by negative one because minimum, we're going to vary it up in a negative fashion because this is being added here. But for maximum, that's just going to be this value right here. So connect it up. So think of it this way. So if our rate of water drop is 60, then this is going to happen once a second. But if our variability is, let's say, 30, then it's going to be half a second variability of our rate of water drop because 30 divided by 60 is 0.5. And then it's either going to be half a second shorter or half a second longer, depending on this random floating range, anywhere in that range. So make sure looping here is unchecked. Make sure you got all that and then compile and save. And let's test this. And the way we test this is select your actor in the world. Steady rate. We're going to keep that unselected variability. I'm going to make that let's do 40. So it's going to be varied quite a bit off of that 60. Now I'm noticing that sometimes I don't see the ripple effect even though the sound spawns. And the reason for that, if we go back into our water body blueprint, I think it has to do with this delay until next tick because what I found fixes it. If I do a delay here and I set this to instead be, let's do 0.05 seconds and then here. So delete out delay until next tick. What's happening is that the particles are being spawned on the Niagara system at a regular rate. And if it's only delayed until next tick, a particle might not spawn between this tick and the next. Whereas 0.05 seconds, a particle is always going to have enough time to spawn. So compile and save this test one more time. So now you should always be getting the ripples whenever you hear the sound playing. And we're going to do a lot more with this water blueprint in the future. We'll set up the ability to randomize the actual location. We'll have water that can like cascade into it like a waterfall. But I really want to get back into gameplay. So that's where we're pivoting to next. So that wraps up our episode for today. And guys, if you have been in this series thus so far from the beginning, 
kudos to your endurance because I know it's been a really long journey and you haven't seen much in terms of gameplay as a payout. And we are entering the final stretch of this marathon race, at least to get an initial gameplay prototype up and running. I don't know how many episodes it's still going to take before we can test gameplay, but not that many. We're not that far off. So I ask you to hold tight, keep the faith if you're already this far along. The next few episodes are going to be a little bit rough because we're just figuring out how our AI is going to behave realistically in the world. So I hope to see you there next episode.